Hello again, card community. It's RJ back again with another video. Let's get right to it. My random Mike Schmidt collection item of the day is this 1988 Tops portfolio, a two pocket folder of Mike Schmidt, his 1988 Tops card. This is the kind you used to take to school with you back in uh, middle school, high school. Just a simple two pocket folder exactly the same as Mike's 1988 Topps card. In fact, I happen to have an 88 Topps card right here for you to compare. Uh, nothing special about this. I just love it. It came with a whole bunch of other players. Uh, like every card was reproduced, but just both, mostly the major stars. You can get them at any um, Target or Walmart or Kmart of the day back in 88. And I picked this one up. I got two of those, actually. I know I had an 89 at one time. I don't think I have that anymore, but you can still get these online if you want. They're pretty cool. I think it's a nice piece in my collection. My random baseball item of the day is interesting. When I was younger, I was into magic. Uh, some people are. And I went into a magic store one day and I found this pack of baseball cards. You might be wondering, well, why is a pack of baseball cards in a magic store? It's just a simple pack of 1989 um, Donruss cards. If I thumb through it, you'll notice that every card is a different player. You know, um, on the back is a guy named Danny Heap. And Danny Heap was a pretty good starter. In fact, Danny Heap was so good that if you put Danny Heap on top of your lineup, like I just did, he makes the entire team better. Whoa, what kind of crazy magic was that? The whole deck just turned into Danny Heap. Well, no. This is what is known as a Svengali deck. A little behind the scenes magic trivia here. What you have here is a card set where every card of Danny Heap or whatever the object card is, the main card, it's just a little shorter than the other one. And there's a whole bunch of random cards plus one Danny Heap in the middle of every one. One random card, then a Danny Heap, then another random card, then a Danny Heap. So that if you thumb through it from back, from front to back like this, you'll only see the other cards. It'll skip over Danny Heap because he's a little shorter, but at the same time, if you thumb this way, you'll capture the larger card and let Danny Heap flop to the bottom so you only see Danny Heap. That's what's known as a Svengali deck. It's been around for centuries. Uh, it's how they do a lot of card tricks. This one was just made out of baseball cards. Had to have it. And I think it's a little cool addition to my baseball card, uh, baseball in general collection. Today's trivia question. Today's trivia question is based upon this guy here. This is the prize to give away. A, night, a 2020 uh, Tops Project 2020 card of Mark McGuire. Obviously, it's based on his 87 rookie card. Uh, this is card number 276 out of the Project 2020 set. Uh, art, art by a guy named Matt, Matt Taylor. Uh, when I bought these last year, I'd always buy the, the bundle. They'd sell them three, they'd release three cards on the same day and you can get it as a bundle or each card individually. I'd always get the bundle because I always wanted one or two cards, but not the third or just one card and not the other two. But I figured, well, I might as well get them all. I'm not a big Mark McGuire collector. I don't necessarily care for Mark. Not that I have anything against him. I just, I'm not interested in collecting his stuff. This one came as part of the bundle, so I'm happy to part with it for a simple answer to a trivia question about Mark McGuire. In 1987, McGuire was the Rookie of the Year because he broke the rookie home run record. How many home runs did McGuire end up with in his rookie season? Very simple question. If you're the first person to answer correctly by sending me the correct answer in an email at ronjack 2 at yahoo.com, I will ship this card to you. I will repeat the trivia question in the description of this video along uh, with a description of what prize is being given away. And the first person to correctly send me an email with the answer to that trivia question, I will send this card. I still have 
the um, wrapper and the black box from Topps 2020, Project 2020, so it'll all be included in this thing together. So that's a nice little thing. All right, today, I have a break for you, people. Um, you know I don't like breaks. I don't, not that I don't like breaks. I don't want to do breaks. Everybody's doing breaks. You know, the latest set that comes out every year. I don't like doing breaks of modern stuff, of cool things. I like doing breaks of odd things. Um, I did one break already. It was the... Um, 2000, I'm sorry, the 1992 Confex Baseball and Choir 64 card set. Um, some National Lampoon caricature, caricature style cards of some of the stars of baseball at the time, plus some odd players and things as well. Uh, check out that video. You can see what I'm talking about. Today, what I have for you is I was looking through Facebook Marketplace the other day, came across somebody selling two of these. This is the 2003 shoebox collection from Topps. Still sealed. What it is, I looked it up and I, I've already been through one of those sealed boxes. It's a complete set in here. There's a complete set of 96 cards in here made to resemble the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. So you'll have players in here of those eras. Cards recreated to look like their rookie cards or iconic cards, uh, sometimes unique designs. 12 packs with a total of 24 cards from the 50s, 24 from the 60s, 24 from the 70s, 24 from the 80s. Each one uh, representing, you know, each group of 24 representing cards from those eras included are four vintage cards, one from the 50s, one from the 60s, one from the 70s, one from the 80s. So the whole thing, really, it's one set of cards, but each one is packed with a stick of gum. I've been through it already. The, the gums are wrapped, so, so it's, the gum's wrapped, so you're not going to lose the cards. Um, I'm actually going to rip it up. I, I, I have one that I'm going to keep the entire set. I'm going to pilfer the Mike Schmidt from the other one because I don't have a loose version of Mike Schmidt from this set yet, and I'm going to add that to my Mike Schmidt collection. But I want to open this up with you, go through it, and let you see what it looks like. Maybe I'll inspire somebody else to go out and get some of these. These you can still find on eBay. They are not rare. They are not valuable. Um, that's the kind of things I'm interested in. It sounds odd. I don't want the valuable stuff. I want valuable collections too, just like everybody else. It's just that it's hard to come by and it makes these older, odder things that much more interesting. Okay, right on top, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to keep it hidden. Right on top are the four vintage cards. We'll look at those later. I'm going to set that aside right now so that you can see they're kind of in this, you know, case. I'm not going to show it to you now and they're covered with the tissue paper. This is what you get when you open the box. All right. Packs of cards from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. These are not vintage cards. They're all reprints produced in, in 2003, part of this 96 card set. So everything in here is individually wrapped. Believe it or not, it's not randomly collated. They're literally, if I open up this pack, it'll be cards one through eight. If I open up the next pack, it'll be cards nine through 16. And when I open up the last pack, it'll be cards uh, 17 through 24. That's the way the set came. It, it was just kind of really cool. It gave you the thrill of opening up packs of cards, which you know, it could always do even in 2003. But you knew you were going to get the whole set. You got four vintage era cards. And here we go. So here's a stick of gum. Like I said, they came with an individually wrapped stick of gum. I'm tempted to eat this, but I'll save it for another person, maybe. And here's what you have. So uh, these are eight cards in the first pack. Obviously, this is the 54 Willie Mays. I'm sorry, 52 Willie Mays. 52 Monty Irvin. 1957 Bill Mazeroski. 52 Phil Rizzuto. Ted Klazuski, Hank Bauer. Ted Klazuski again. What did I say? Ted, two Ted Kozuskis? What did I say Ted Kozuski for? Oh, Hank Sawyer, Hank Bauer, Ted Kozuski, and Robert Roberts. Each one has, to distinguish it, you know, from reprints, 
it has a little gold foil that says, you know, Topps Shoebox Collection. So you know it's part of this set. And if you look at the back, it literally is produced to look just like the original card. So it has the original number from the original card. But on the side, it has this little thing down here. And it tells you that this is card number 8 of 96. So if you look, these are all, like I said, cards 1 through 8 of this set. And I'm going to take some quick time here. We're not searching for anything like I was with my last rip. We're literally going to open up an entire set because that's what's in this box. It's just a fun little rip, something I thought was really cool. Um, and I want to show you at the end, we'll show the vintage cards. So still some 52s. Al, Red Shandis, Al Shandis, Bob Feller, Duke Snyder, Bobby Thompson, Hoyt Wilhelm, Johnny Padres. These were 53s now. Johnny Padres, Whitey Ford, and Ralph Kiner. Uh, I'm also a Hall of Fame collector, meaning I like to get one card of every Hall of Famer. I'm not going to find a card in this set that I don't already have any Hall of Famer. I already have every Hall of Famer uh, in this era. Uh, an original card or a reprint card, like these would be reprint cards. A lot of my cards are reprints, like my Mantle card. I have a 53 Mantle card in my Hall of Fame collection. But it is the archives version. It is not an original. Now we're into the 55s. Uh, I could be wrong about this. I call it 55. I'm not sure if this was 55 or 56. I can never get them straight still to this day. So I think this is 55. Armin Killebrew, Louis Aparicio. This is 57, Bobby Richardson. When I opened that, that first box, and I'll show you it in a second, I got two Bobby Richardsons back to back. So Cole Lake Machine kicked me out an extra one there. Hope somebody isn't missing one out there in the world. And I got two of them because they only, like I said, these weren't randomly inserted. These were inserted one set per box in the packs. Frank Robinson, a rookie card uh, from 57. Brooks Robinson, the Stan Musial from 58 All-Star. 59, uh, Orlando Cepeda. Very nice. Those are your 50s style cards. Like I said, this, these are the 24 from the era of the 50s. Move it on. The era of the 60s. Uh, they they don't, I don't think they ever duplicated any players, so you're going to get somebody new here. Here's a stick of gum again. Willie McCovey. There you go. I got, oh my word, I got, boy, I'll talk about the collation. I got three Murray Wills in this pack. And again, they're only supposed to be one per pack. You're not supposed to get, and they're all, they're not original, you know, they're not, not like they accidentally stuck an original. No, it's three of these copies. So somebody out there is missing their Maury Wills. Give me a call. I have it. There should only be one per set. Juan Marichal, the Yastrzemski rookie, Boog Powell from 62. The Stargell, they said that any rookie card that was multiple things, this is the uh, 63, um, uh, or should I say the 64 Willie Stargell. This was a four-panel card, four pictures. And they simply take him out, the one person, and make a card of his own. Here's Burt Campanaris. Here's Tug McGraw was on one half of this card from the Mets in the rookie season. That's 65. That's the first patch of this uh, shoebox collection. Joe Morgan is another one that was half a, half a thing. Uh, Tony Perez, Louis Tiant, Fergie Jenkins was half a card. Jim Palmer is a real rookie card. Rod Crew was half. Tom Seaver and Nolan Ryan. We all know Nolan Ryan was, that's half of the real card that came out that year for Nolan in 68. This one feels a little thicker too. I wonder if I got an extra one on this one too. Raleigh Fingers, Reggie Jackson's rookie card. Gaylord Perry, Al Oliver, that's half the card. Nice uh, Lou Brock, Johnny Benches, again, half a card there. Paul Blair, and this was a top-bottom one from Phil Necro. And that is 24 cards from the 1960s. Again, you will get a full set of 96 cards out of this box. That is the way they are packaged. They are packaged, uh, each one. With all the necessary cards. Now we're into the 70s. Bill Buckner, top to bottom, rookie card of that year. Uh, some guy named Daryl Evans. I know Daryl Evans. We all do. You got the 71 design here, the Burt Blylevin. 
uh, Dave Concepcion, George Foster, Bobby Rich, Greg Luzinski, nice Philly pickup there. And then the Ron Say, this is interesting, because uh, Ron Say, I don't know if he did, if, if he had a card in 72, it's news to me, because I know he was on the card with Mike Schmidt in 73. Uh, it's possible he had a 72 rookie card because that's why they put it here. I don't recall that, though. Maybe somebody out there can inform me. So what do we got now? We're still in the second pack from the 70s. I know there's a Mike Schmidt in here. Well, I've seen it. Remember, I did open one of these already. And in the 72 design, Cecil Cooper, Carlton Fisk. If you know Carlton Fisk, he was one of two on that card. Mickey Rivers, Dwight Evans, Rich, you know, Goose Gossage. Here's the Schmidt. Schmidt was part of a three team, three rookie uh, card. It was him and um, Ron Say and a guy named Larry Heisel. I think, no, well, that's not it. I can't remember the guy's name. It's some, some forgotten guy. I feel bad for that guy because if he wants his own rookie card and said, hey, I was on this rookie card, it cost him like a fortune to get it. Uh, Dave Parker and I believe uh, Gary Carter was part of a four panel set. That's Carter's one. Those are your cards. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the, this is the last one from the 70s. There's something I want to show you when we get to the 80s. I was a little mad that they did this, but I'll hold that for later. Robin Yount, Ted Seckersley, uh, Ron Guidry, Jack Clark, Andre Dawson, Mark Fidrich, Bruce Souter, and Willie Hernandez. I don't know why there wasn't a George Brett. That's one of the things I wasn't thrilled when I saw this Robin Yount. I figured, well, they're definitely going to have me George Brett in here, but they never did include a George Brett. So these were your cards from the 70s. And again, the last decade was the 80s. Again, you go through these and you're going to get every card in the set. This is what I don't like. This right here is a 1980 version of Ozzie Smith. Well, why wouldn't they have included his 79 card, you know? Why would they have given you this as his rookie card? Because these are supposed to be like the rookie cards. You got the 81 Kirk Gibson design, the 84 Mattingly, the 85 traded Joe Carter, the 84 Pucket, 85 Pucket. Even Dale Murphy which should have been a 77 card. They threw him in the 80s. I don't know why they did this. Keith Hernandez was a 70s style card. I'm not sure why they did this. There are plenty of good rookies in the 80s they could have used, but for some reason... They pulled some guys out of the 70s and threw them into the 80s because that was the era in which you knew them. And I, again, I just I think that's a, there's a disservice to the concept here. Walt Weiss, I mean, good Lord. He was late 80s. Makes sense to have him in here, but I don't know. Bill Madlock, 82, even that's out of thing. He's way back in 70. I mean, it was his first year. It was 73. So how do you put Bill Madlock in the 70s version? I don't know. Bo Jackson, this is Bo's most famous card, I think. The Future Stars card from 87 design. Obviously, his rookie card is 86 tops traded and all the other traded sets. Uh, you got Buddy Bell, Doc Gooden, Eric Davis, George Bell. This was his rookie card at the time. And then Harold Reynolds. All right, one last pack from the 80s. Again, that's all there is are every card. Not randomly inserted, but specifically inserted in the packs to give you a full set of 96 cards. Jim Rice. You know this ain't real. Jim Rice was 75 rookie card. Uh, Ken Griffey, Lee Smith, his 82 tops rookie. Ken Seiko, this is the 86 top traded design. Lance Parrish, Paul O'Neill, Paul Molitor. That's way off, obviously. And then Alan Trammell. A lot of cool. I just think it's a cool design. I, get, I love having a set. I love the concept. And then lastly, you get these vintage tra vintage cards. I'm going to look. This is the first time I'm looking at the cards. Let me do this with you all. Okay, I haven't seen them yet. I haven't even looked. There are four cards. It's in a glass case. Um, it looks like it's upside down. All right, so it's in a glass case, a 50s, a 60s, a 70s, and an 80s card. I have not yet seen this. You could get somebody big. I don't know. Let's take a look and see what we got. Let me put it down here so you can see. Here we are. All right. We have uh, 1950, I don't even know the style, Mike McCormick. A 60s era. I think this is 66 or 65 Jim Landis. 75 Tommy Harper. And a 1980 Carlton Fisk. 
This is how they come in this like screw down giant case, which is kind of cool, I suppose, because if you could rip this sucker out, get rid of these four cards and put in four really cool cards, you have a nice display case. What do we got here? Jim Landis. This was the, uh, all right, this was the 67 design. That's a 67 Jim Landis. And the Mike McCormick, if you look, I don't know what the stat is. I do not know. Somebody out there knows what this is. I'd have to look up the design. I'm sorry for not being updated on my old 50s era cards, but I do know that's the 75 and that's the 1980 Carlton Fisk. Let me show you what I got in my own pack. When I opened up the other one, I got a couple more interesting cards. Um, you got the same 50s era style card, a guy named Dave Philly from the Phillies, which is kind of cool. Uh, Lee May with an E at the end. I'm not sure if that's actually how Lee spent, spelled his name with an E at the end. And then Veda Pinson, you know, serious um, batting champ star with the Reds for a while. And then I got a Reggie Jackson from 87. So that's what I got in my own personal thing. Now, again, this card set for me was just fun to open with you guys. Uh, I'm literally going to steal out of it the Mike Schmidt card because I'm going to put this in my own personal Mike Schmidt collection. I do not have the uh, Topps 2003 shoebox collection Mike Schmidt card. I'm going to pull that sucker right on out of there. So this is no longer a complete set. I will tell you this, I'll be happy to ship off to anybody who wants any of these cards. I will be happy at my own cost of a stamp to send you any of these cards that you saw. You can rewind the video. I went through all of them. Tell me which card from the 2003, uh, because this is no longer a complete set because I'm stealing Mike Schmidt out of there. I'll be happy to send you for your own personal collection any one of these tops. 2003 shoebox collection cards that you ask for so once again in the description i'll have my email that's ronjack02 at yahoo um rerun the video tell me what card out of here you'd like to have and i'll send it to you all right i hope you enjoyed the uh video please like uh comment subscribe tell me uh if you like this set um i enjoy doing these breaks of weird things things that don't hold a lot, have a lot of value but they're just fun to look at um tell me what else you like about my videos what you recommend i do just comment and let me know uh thanks for watching thanks for playing along hope to see you all again next time take care